some of the big players when you talk about pathogens that are affected by irrigation or irrigation in, involved with uh, with pathogens, um, of course, are Phytophthora and, and Pythium. Um, these are these are considered or, or known as the water molds, um, and they they can live in water and they're they're spread readily by water. So uh, irrigation plays a huge role in in disease outbreaks by these two pathogens. Um, Phytophthora. Uh, there's three really primary species that we find here to be economically important in South Florida on ornamentals, and that is um, Phytophthora nicotiana. Phytophthora palmivora and Phytophthora cinnamomi. Um, they cause primarily root, stem, and of course uh, they can get up into the canopy and cause leaf blights. They can cause bud rots on palms. Um, so they, they can basically affect all portions of the plant. And then um, another uh, closely related pathogen, Pythium, um, is, is also a big problem, primarily a root rot problem. And, and we see Let's say the most uh, common species would be Pythium splendens, and then uh, Pythium aphanerdomatum, which is, is a little unique because aphanerdomatum will actually uh, affect the canopy and can look a lot like Phytophthora. This is one that will um, start off maybe as a root rot and then move its way up into the uh, into the foliage. And then there's a couple other species of Pythium that we uh, see quite frequently. Um, and again, I mentioned the, the root dysfunction, which is huge because it will impair the plant's ability to take up uh, nutrients. And of course, then you get the severe chlorosis. And, uh, and you know, this is, this is a big problem, especially for some of the longer grown crops uh, because uh, it takes a long time to, to turn around to bring back the, uh, the quality of plant that you need to sell. Um, and here um, I'm going to show some, some photos of, of some of the symptoms. Um, this, this happens to be Phytophthora on a bromeliad. And, and basically what you're seeing here is, is a, it's a root and a crown rot. You can see the whole uh, crown of this plant is, uh, is severely affected. Um, this is generally a fatal disease. Um, note how black the tissue becomes. On a lot of the foliage plants, uh, the tissue turns dark brown to black when it's infected with um, Phytophthora. Um, this is just a different host. This is Liriope. And again, here you can see that dark brownish black discoloration. Um, note in the, uh, the bottom right hand side of the slide, I have some uh, glamour shot of the sporangia of Phytophthora palmivora. Um, this this one is is a big problem uh, on causing root and crown rot on Liriope, but then also uh, this is the culprit for bud rot on a lot of our larger landscape palms in, in South Florida. Um, here we can see uh, this is more more or less a stem rot, um, and this happens to be on Peperomia. And you can see, again, the, the dark brown, the black discoloration. And Phytophthora will just literally macerate the tissue. Uh, it has a water soak type of appearance. And then oftentimes, you'll see the, the sign or the actual fungus growing on the tissue. And it, it generally, it appears more a uh, hyaline um, than white. So it's got that kind of clear, almost like fishing line um, type of uh, appearance. Um, and then this is just a, another variety of Peperomia. Again, um, fatal disease, it will just cause the entire, uh, entire stem and, and, and upper portions of the branches just to, to collapse. And here, here's what, uh, what it looks like uh, causing bud rot. This is a latan palm. Um, the initial symptoms, of course, are that the spear leaf or the youngest leaf uh, will start to turn chlorotic and eventually necrotic and just it basically will just kill the, kill the palm outright. Um, what you can actually do is, is a good indication of this disease is that you can literally pull the spear leaf right out of the palm. Um, and in some cases, you know, the, the palm can actually survive. It depends on the degree that of the, the bud infection and how, how severely it's affected. And, you can note on the, the bottom right-hand side of this uh, slide, you can see the purple, uh, dark blackish discoloration of stri striations through the, uh, that internal bud tissue, and that's just an indication of the infection. 
Um, <clears throat> what's interesting is that Phytophthora also causes a, a foliar blight on palms, and this happens to be uh, Phytophthora nicotiana, not palmivora. And this is something we came across uh, this summer, which was highly favorable for Phytophthora in South Florida. And again, if you're using uh, overhead irrigation and with heavy rains, um, it can be a you know a big issue. Um, the overhead irrigation is, is going to act to you know make the the foliage um, a more favorable environment for infection, and then of course uh, just to increase the, the spread of, of the pathogen. Um, this is uh, Phytophthora nicotiana on uh, this happens to be Pothos, and you can see again the the characteristic dark brown to black uh, discoloration of the infected tissue and. Note I mentioned that you can see the, uh, sometimes see the, the sign of the pathogens um, living or sporulating on the tissue and that, that uh, whitish kind of clearish or trans um, transparent looking uh, uh, structure, that's actually the, the mycelium of, of the pathogen on the leaf. And then uh, here's what it looks like. Um, this is on anthuriums. Um, and again, you get a water soak discoloration, but the key is is that dark brown to black uh, tissue. And this this will this disease or this pathogen, um, when present under um, favorable environmental conditions, can can move through large large portions of, of or I should say large numbers of plants in a very short period of time. So literally in a 48 to you know 72 hour period. Uh, you can get an outbreak in a nursery, and, and literally, you know, it can cause uh, severe uh, <laughs> fatality of, of plants. Um, pythium, uh, basically, all the major foliage plant families are susceptible to pythium. So you get a, you get a wider, more of a I'd say a, a wider host range. Um, I mentioned pythium splendens is is definitely the most common species we find in South Florida. Um, symptoms generally appear as a slight wilting. The, the plant just looks looks a little off. Um, it, it loses a little bit of its uh, of its herger, and then turns chlorotic. Generally, the lower leaves turning chlorotic first, and then eventually, if it's if it's a real severe infection, um, necrosis and, and uh, death can can occur. This is. Uh, that washed out um, look that happens to, to palms that have been over irrigated and then pre, you know, of course predisposed favorable environment for pythium. Pythium moves in and then causes uh, uh, root dysfunction. And the plant basically, uh, well it impairs the root so that the plant uh, can't take up proper nutrition. Um, this can again be devastating for some of the, the larger uh, palm specimens because of the time or the period that it takes to, to, to green these up and to uh, turn them around. I just want to also show uh, a good um, symptom associated with infection by pythium. This happens to be a root system and you can see the yellow, the yellow arrow is uh, is a portion that is infected with pythium, and, and basically what you're seeing here is the cortex, the outer portion of the of the root, just begins to slough off, and you can, you know, kind of just go in and, and and take your fingers and peel that off very easily. So it's just uh, it's completely compromised, and doesn't have the ability again to function as a as a healthy root system, and it can't take up nutrition. So that sloughing off of the cortex is is a great way to uh, to identify pythium root rot. Um, so just some management options associated with the water molds. Um, the elimination of weeds is recommended, especially for uh, pythium problems, because they ha do have wide host ranges. And um, weeds, of course, can, can serve as, as alternate hosts. But then also, um, weeds can also uh, impair air movement through nerves. So if you've got a, a big weed problem, um, you, you get poor aeration in the nursery, and that can be an issue. Um, efforts should be made to reduce humidity. Um, of course, this will decrease the number of spores produced, the number of spores that germinate, and the number of spores that can actually penetrate the plant. Um, spacing between plants is really important. Again, you want to try to get good air movement through the nursery to kind of dry things out. Um, and of course, again, I mentioned overhead irrigation uh, should be avoided. Uh, you know, overhead irrigation is going to, uh, you know, it's going to 
uh, increase the, the humidity, increase the moisture on the leaf surface, uh, becomes more favorable for infection, but then also it spreads these pathogens. So you can use a microjet or drip irrigation. That's going to be the, the, the best case uh, scenario. Um, Water in the morning, if you're using overhead irrigation uh, to allow the foliage to dry, that's really important. Uh, you definitely don't want to water late in the day uh, because uh, with wet plants in the evening can be, uh, that's a, again, highly favorable for, for disease. Um, plants should be protected from abio abiotic damages. Um, anything that stresses the plant is going to predispose it to, uh, to further uh, infection. Um, of course, uh, Proper nutrition is really important, um, using the proper rates of pesticides, uh, of course protecting plants from both uh, heat and cold injury. Um, water stress, again, that's a huge issue, uh, whether you're overwatering or not watering enough. Um, you know, anything that stresses these plants is going to make them more susceptible uh, to, pat to pathogens. And of course, there's a number of different uh, chemicals that are uh, labeled um, for Phytophthora. Um, note here that I've got the, the active ingredient um, listed and also the, the fungicide re resistance uh, action committee group code. So here you can, uh, um, it's a good idea to rotate among different chemistries to uh, minimize the chance of uh, resistance in, in the pathogen population. Um, and here's, a, here's a, uh, um, some uh, chemicals uh, listed for pythium. Um, of course, there are some differences. Some of these that work on Phytophthora may not be effective on Pythium and vice versa. So it's really important to uh, read the label and make sure, and also to get a proper diagnosis um, when, you, when you're using these chemicals.